mentions? I not off my head, but I used to know them. Okay, well, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Now, I mean, they're like a standard. Yeah. Know, so I, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, I kind of thought about it a little bit. Um, I had a few ideas, if you'd be interested in hearing. I kind of yeah. thought of, like, finding maybe some, like, anybody in the area who's, like, a local photographer who takes pictures, like, around here. And, like, and, and, like some high catchphrase, like, the time of ours. Like, of, like, the forest or, like, the Hawking Hills area or something like that. Just to off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. But, like, that makes it a local thing. And, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely good to do that. Try to do stuff. But Gene and I do want to get together with you. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. Anytime. Um, For those trying to view from the Facebook page, we're just getting started. We'll be rolling in a second. Okay, let me see your email. Okay. Um, much better. Yeah, that looks really good. It's working. Yeah, before it was like squished in. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's awesome. Good suggestion. I was afraid it wouldn't work, but I'm glad you told me. <laughs> Gene, you could use this too. Yeah. <laughs> we have a microphone right behind you, Gene. Right, right. Okay. Okay, so everybody who's here, uh, try to sit as close as you can. If we're using the microphone, so if you want to sit back there and you can hear us on the microphone, okay, that's fine. If you can, we encourage you to come forward. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, just real quickly introduce myself. I'm Eric Engel. I've been chairman of this organization, formerly known as Group Leader, for about four years. We have our co-vice chair right here in front of me, Gene Ambrose. We have another co-vice chair sitting back here, Julia Manorino. Our secretary, uh, Cindy, couldn't be here tonight. And I don't see our treasurer, Dave, here tonight, but we have other leadership here as well, like Adeline and Mike Bailey. So I just wanted to point everybody out who's here tonight. Um, and we welcome you. And I'm going to let Jean get us started by introducing our panelists and uh, get rolling here tonight. So thank you for coming very, very much. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's a good idea. Um, thank you, Eric. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about Mid Ohio Valley Climate Action, we have been in existence about four or five years. Uh, started locally by volunteers who were very concerned about the science of climate change and wanted to know if there were other people in our community that were also concerned about it. And so, as it turned out, there were. And we've been working around uh, communicating the facts of uh, the danger and urgency of climate change ever since. Um, uh, and uh, so if you uh, are interested in our organization and some of the other programs that, we're, uh, that we uh, 
do every month. Uh, we're, we've got an active Facebook page, you can find out what's going on, or you can sign up to be a member, because this is an important year in terms of uh, environmental policy. It's the uh, 50th anniversary of Earth Day, is this uh, uh, April, when, uh, which was founded uh, right after we got those first pictures of the Earth from space. Uh, after we went to the moon for the first time and people could really appreciate how we are, we share this one beautiful blue marble in space and uh, it's the only planet we've got. There is no planet B. Um, so we do these public programs every month and why this particular program, uh, I initiated this, we've got a very uh, kind of entrepreneurial group where when people are really concerned about issues they bring them forward and then we uh, see what we can do. Um, but there's, uh, so MOVCA has been very concerned about communicating uh, facts about the science of climate change and the urgency of it, but we also want to be a catalyst for urgent action and solutions. And there are lots of solutions, well worked out solutions out there around generating power from renewable resources, uh, electric cars, and all of that kind of thing. But really, uh, as I've understood it, it deeply over the last several years, one of the toughest problems is confronting our love affair with plastic, uh, which is made from fossil fuels, and is really the basis of our economy, our consumer culture, our throwaway society, and the kind of conveniences that we've come to really take for granted. It's really a tough problem. And so uh, recycling is, an, is a step, an important thing for people, and it is not as easy maybe as it should be. Uh, and so one of the reasons that we have this program certainly is to share information about uh, recycling programs in our area, what they take, what they don't take, who can use them, that kind of a thing. But also as the catalyst of a conversation about plastic, improving recycling, and particularly how do we not use the plastic to begin with, or how do we reuse the plastic to uh, not use any more fossil fuel, but to, um, to create a new economy and new jobs. And so uh, there is a worldwide crisis in terms of recycling right now. Um, and I know we're gonna get into that for sure, but uh, because of the, the uh, the kind of solutions that we need to move for around what the economy, uh, what a sustainable economy looks like that is not um, dependent on fossil fuel uh, uh, is a, uh, an important part of this conversation. And one of the reasons that uh, we invited, I think actually what I'm gonna do is go down the row as we uh, move from person to person uh, and introduce them then because all the way at the end is Mr. John Wessel. Ron. Who, Ron, I'm sorry. Uh, Wessel, who is with Mondo Polymers. And he is, I think this is a good way to start the conversation because it, sh it points, to the, points us to the future. And uh, he is here to tell us about uh, his company and how he uses, uh, how he recycles uh, plastic. So I am going to... I don't need that. All right, good. Okay, sir. Well, take it away. Okay. Um, I'll just sit if that's okay, but uh, my name is Ron Wessel. I'm with Mondo Polymer Technologies. We're in Reno, Ohio. I've worked there for 14 years. I've lived in Marietta all my life. I went from my family's business was Merit Ignition Incorporated. We sold auto parts and stuff for years. We sold the company in 2001. I worked for the company we sold it to for five years. I couldn't do that anymore. Mondo was looking for somebody to take over their uh, 
uh, ac material acquisition. We've been friends for a long time, so we got together and I've been there ever since. Um, when I started there in 2006, we were recycling about 8 million pounds a year. This year we're going to do 35 million pounds. Wow. So we've really grown, um, really expanded, we're continuing to grow. Um, and this is the product that we make out of recycled plastic. This is a plastic guardrail block. This is what holds the rail to the post. It's not a bumper, it's not a cushion, it's actually a device to, it's called a block out. This holds the guardrail away from the post. The Federal Highway Administration figured out years ago that as a car goes down the guardrail, if there's not something to keep the tires away from the post, the tire will catch the post and flip the car over the guardrail. So they decided that they had to have a block out to keep the rail away from the post. A lot of you see are made out of wood. Mr. Mondo, uh, He's the most politically incorrect person you'll ever meet in your life, and the man is a genius. And uh, he wrote this up on a bar napkin back in 1993, and they got together and slowly but surely got it put together. And now it's a uh, product we're selling millions of these a year. We sell them, you know, all across the world. We sell them to all the United States, Puerto Rico. Mexico, Canada, Australia, everywhere. We sell them everywhere. So, um, like I say, we're using right now, we're using 90,000 pounds of plastic a day in our operation. We're running five machines that make these blocks, we make all different shapes and styles. This is another part we make. It's just a wheel chalk. You put this under your wheel to hold the car from rolling away. We make several hundred of these, but we're making 10,000 of these a day, 10,000 a day, in little old Reno, Ohio. So, um, so our appetite's pretty high for material. Uh, the things that have happened in China are great for us. They've been able to, all that material that was going over now, my phone never stops ringing because people want to sell us their material, which is great. So we're, we're happy for that. Um, it's, it's tough now for these folks. These folks have a lot tougher job than I do because we're not an actual recycler per se. We don't take stuff from the public. We don't take stuff like wood, cardboard, glass, aluminum, steel. We just take plastic for our operation. We don't sell any plastic off. We everything we get we use. So we're not set up, you know, like Rick is to, you know, have all these open places where we can dump stuff off. Kathy does a great job helping us out with that. You know, a lot of people, we tell them to take their stuff over to Kathy and we get stuff from Mary Recycling, which is nice because if we, if we just tell people, yeah, you can bring your stuff, you know, <coughs> I only got one container, it'd be full of everything. You'd have glass, wood, cardboard, paper, plastic, everything could be in there. So that's why we don't open our operation open up to the public. Um, it's a great company. I'm very lucky to move from one family business to another family business in my hometown. It's almost unheard of today, but uh, we're continuing to grow. Um, we're gonna have, a, we had six record years in a row. This year was number six, we've grown every year. The company's tripled in size in three, in eight years. Wow. So um, the demand for plastic is pretty high. So um, we encourage people to recycle. well, People in my neighborhood know where I work, so I go out and there's bags of plastic sitting on my north porch, even on my front porch, <laughs> by my car and stuff, so, which is fine, so, but uh, uh, these folks do a great job, you know, these are the people that you want to work with to get your material and, you know, uh, you've got to keep stuff clean, um, it's just really difficult to, these guys have a really hard job to try to keep the material sorted find places to sell off all their other materials. Because of what's happened to China, it's become more difficult. You know, Rick and I have a great relationship. I have a lot of relationships with the other solid waste authorities in West Virginia. Um, we do a lot of business together. Uh, we're very lucky. And, uh, we will continue to do that. So, you know, if you ever have a question about plastic, my email is ron at mondopolymer.com. It's pretty simple. Want to, I've got cards here, I'll leave them on the table, but email me anytime. Uh, 
email comes right to my phone. I mean, I'm answering emails at 10, 11 o'clock at night. So, um, but it's, it's a great thing that they've done. And um, we make some other products. If you look at our website, it's pretty simple. It's www.mondopolymer.com. Everything's Mondo Polymer. It's pretty simple. Um, we make some other stuff out of virgin materials, but uh, that doesn't relate to this product. But um, we do actually make a, a medicine ball. It's called D ball. Um, it's a weighted medicine ball. We make them from three inches up to 14 inches, and they weigh anywhere from three pounds to 300 pounds. So we're selling them to distributors who sell them to the military, SWAT teams, um, uh, football teams, any kind of. CrossFit is the big thing now. The CrossFit people are a cult as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they love it because they want this thing. So we're doing a, a project right now. Two of our distributors got split a military contract for a million dollars. So each one got half a million dollars and we're making 33,000 nine inch 10 pound balls. So in between now we started that in December, we're gonna finish in March. But we're filling some of those with some other recycled product, just, you know, foam that we get, we grind up foam, it's polyethylene foam, and put it in the balls to melt liquid, so. Are those made of recycled materials, or is no, that virgin they're, material? No, they're, they're virgin material. Yeah. Can, it's hard to get a good good profile and a rubberized texture. We make those out of liquid PVC, it's called Plastisol. That's what we make the buoys out of, too, if you ever watch Debbie's catch those buoys, mm -hmm. the things they hook on the pots, those are made by us in Reno, Ohio. Our, our, our buoys are on the Cornelia Marie. They're on there. And those are recycled? No, those are new. No, they're not. That's okay. all new. Okay. That's new so if people had a, what kind of plastic do you do you take? We use polyethylene. So I mean, the in terms of making those blocks, the what kind of recycled, uh, like ones, twos, fives? Two, twos and fours. Twos and fours. Twos and fours. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. If people had an idea for a product, can they talk to you? Sure. We probably won't do it, but they can talk yeah. to you. <laughs> sure. sure. No, seriously, I'm, I'm not being smart. I mean, we are so overwhelmed, right? And right now, as all of you know, That's wonderful. it's hard to find workers. That's yeah. our biggest problem. We, we don't have enough manpower right now to run all the machines we have. Wow. Yeah, we don't have enough manpower. We, have, we can only we have five machines. A lot of times we can only run four because we can't find enough manpower. What is the block in terms of finding good workers? Just getting people. Get, get people who can pass a drug test. People who want to work. Okay. Yeah. We use we use we staff better. We use Mancan. Um, there's a new company in Merida called Move. Um, they just started here the first year. Uh, but we're using we staff better. It's just they're. It's just a shift in, I don't want to sound racist or whatever, but or whatever. But the, the kids today just don't want to work. You can't find people that want to work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we just, that's our biggest problem. I mean, we have guys come in there that go through orientation and they never show up. We have guys come in and go through orientation, work one day and quit. Mm -hmm. And the job is easier now than it's ever been. All guys got to do is take his block, off a conveyor belt, stack it on a skid. That's all he's got to do. That's all he's got to do. And we can't get guys to show up to do that. And we hear that all over. Yeah, it is everywhere. Nobody, that's, that's not yeah. new for, that's, that's everywhere. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Wessel, for, uh, for, for that. I mean, it's exciting to think about the new jobs that could be created mm -hmm. with that kind of innovative thinking. Uh, and uh, it would be a solution to our, a partial solution at least to our plastic yeah. problem for sure. Yeah, we'll take, you know, like I say, Rick, Rick knows and Kathy knows and as we move along, I mean, we're working with all the solid waste authorities. We're, we're taking all we can get. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Um, yeah. I'm going to skip over a couple of people. Um, and introduce you to Mike uh, Russo, yep. Ros Rosso, uh, who is a city planner with the city of Parkersburg. Um, he needs to leave soon, 
And so I'm not sure if you want to set up uh, uh, Mr. Deere in terms of talking, but uh, if you want to bring a message from the development department, that'd be great. Uh, I mean, where I really just come into this, and, and Rick knows pretty much everything that goes on with the recycling center um, in Parkersburg, but uh, I guess where I kind of come into the process is we get a sizable grant. We have this one that we're working off of right now, and every two years we we applied for and got a grant from the DEP. Um, it's called a REAP grant. Um, you know what the amount is right now? I think it's like 119000 this, this year was 119,000. We'd have been qualified for the whole 150, but the state didn't have enough money. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'll yeah, I didn't take that. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, they didn't have enough money to cover oh, yeah? the request, so they chiseled, so they cut everybody. They chiseled everybody back. In it. But the city of Parkersburg can't complain. We can do, yeah. I mean, they're pretty fond of us in Charleston. So we do all right. And if I can add to that, the DEP grant, the REAP grant is only available every other year. Okay. So in, in the same year, I cannot apply for a grant for the city of Parkersburg because they consider it the same thing. So we apply the off years, and we also have been, what, probably Rick, for the last five years at least, been using our money for his recycling. But I've been in, in almost all the recycling centers in West Virginia, and these guys run. Rick runs a top-notch operation. <clears throat> these guys, the guys there, they got a, they run a hell of a good operation. I guarantee you. Well, Rick, could you continue then and, <laughs> and describe the city of Parkersburg's recycling okay. uh, process? And well, I had several questions yeah, that I wanted I'm everybody the, to kind of. I'm cover. not the greatest public speaker, but I can answer questions. Here, let. Them. Let's just so, yeah, yeah, pass someone this. someone has questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you want to. It's okay, we'll back you up. Yeah. Back you up, buddy. Yeah. Here you go. I'm going to give you that and make sure that, yeah, there's plenty. I, I probably don't need this. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, maybe, I'm, I'm, it may be later. easier for people to hear in the back. Oh, you can't hear back here? Okay. Yeah, people to hear in the back. Yeah, like I said, I'm not the greatest public speaker. I don't it's have that okay. much experience. This is informal. But, uh, any questions anyone has, I've got a PowerPoint presentation that shows our whole process up there. Does everyone know where we're located? Yeah. What's your function? No. What's your function, your title? A supervisor, sanitation department supervisor. I, I take care of the trash department and the recycling center. So you're up at the recycling center? Right? Yes, I'm there all, all the time. Yeah, where you, we're you might ch check those questions. Okay. Too, just, yeah. yeah, where we're located is everyone familiar with the Memorial Bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're going toward the bridge like you want to go to Belfry, right before you get to the bridge, take a right on Garfield Avenue. Okay, as soon as you take that right, take the very next left. And just follow that street all the way to the back and you'll run right into the facility. Now we do give tours. If anyone wants to come up and go through it, and uh, I've got a guy that does a little gizmo thing, and, and he's pretty good at it. He's been around about 30 years, so. Uh, and he, he explains everything that happens. So groups interested, we get a lot of Cub Scout groups, uh, a lot of youth groups, church groups and stuff. And it's, it's not hard to set one up. You contact me with the city and, and we'll pretty much be available for your time, whatever fits, fits what you're doing. Uh, we do about 100 tons of material a month, have for a long time. Like Ron was talking, the China-India deal uh, has kind of, in, in 2017, we made $122,000 in sales. This year we'll be lucky to hit 50. Uh, where we were getting $75 a ton for paper, now we're getting 15. It's just totally destroyed the markets, or it's just a glut. Now, I can say in the last three or four years, our mixed paper, your newspapers, that type of material, no one reads the paper anymore. So our paper has dropped way down in volume, but the plastics have gone way up. 
So our basic overall tonnage for the year is the same, but it's, like I said, the, the percentage of plastics way up. We've got recycle bins and we provide recycle bins to every resident within the city of Parkersburg. We basically uh, service the, the city limits of Parkersburg. And we're up to pretty close to between 30 and 35% of all the households in the city have recycle bins now. So it's, it's really picked up. And in the material that we take to the landfill, our, our overall trash pickup, we're recycling roughly about 10%. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but in the city of Parkersburg, it's unlimited trash. So we're kind of, we don't really match up too well with areas that do their recycling when you've got a limit on your trash. City of Parkersburg has no limit. So, when so actually 10% is not bad. So when you say unlimited trash, so people can throw away couches and chairs. Absolutely, and absolutely. That makes it pretty tough. Yes, it does. We have no limits and-, and uh, That makes it good, actually. It keeps the city clean. It throws that percentage on Right. Yeah. True, it's it's getting getting stuff out of the, the trash out of the streets and out of the right. places. On a county basis, we're right now, the last one we had, and that's actually been over a year ago now, is 30.4% of all the solid waste in Wood County. Out of that, 30.4% gets recycled. Um, and I gave a presentation here a couple months ago in November, so we'll go over all that stuff. But that's not bad. The national average is 23%, so we're just a little bit above not bad. <laughs> but when you look at good, uh, like Portland and Seattle and San Francisco that do 70 to 80% of all their waste, then we're bad. <laughs> and we've got a lot of room to grow on, on what we can do. And it is so easy and, maybe I'm an idiot, but fun to recycle. Because when you have the bins sitting out there and you know that, oh, I can save that from the landfill on that, it's kind of fun to separate those into categories. So what we do have other, to What are the we, other two places doing that we don't do, that attract so many more they, they require, yes. first of all. And West Virginia, uh, the mentality of a citizenry just doesn't like mandates. <laughs> um, I'm working on a program now. Yes, it, it's true. true. We get a calls occasionally to, can you all outlaw trash bags, plastic bags? And we just don't think in West Virginia that would ever fly, unfortunately. I'd like that law. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're working on a program now of posters. Then we're going to provide retailers and merchants that it's got a picture actually of Mount Wood Park, beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. And it says something effective. To help keep Wood County beautiful, we provide plastic bags only upon your request. So that's kind of a start in that, you know, to, to make people aware that they go up to register and they're busy and the merchant puts it in the, and they don't pay attention. Yeah. But if they go up and the merchant would only put it if they requested, they think, you know, I really don't need that. So hopefully that would be a little start. But yeah, what's the difference? Is it would help though if you could somehow get the general word out to the merchants in the area not to provide those bags. I go in there. Right. Dollar store, and then the other day, it's typical. And I'm not just there, get two items, they automatically put it yeah, in a bag. That's right. Crew like automatically put it in a bag. And to make the point, I say, no, don't waste the bag. Right. And, I'm sure that and that's what these signs say is we only give out bags upon your request. And all these. So the merchants won't do it. Okay, but I think if, if you would get into the heads of the owners and managers of these stores, and they would talk to their employees you'd find that... Well, like I say, that's what this, this sign says. Yeah, so the merchants agree on a knuck on the center. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's a one-man operation, so yeah. I, I carry them in my truck, and as I get out, I try to put them. Yeah. No, but, but it's frequently done, I don't know, by, by municipalities that are trying to improve the situation, is to charge 10 cents a bag or something. Oh, yes. That gets, uh, and, and, and that's understandable. <laughs> Yeah, sure. so, uh, you know, I'm just saying from a legislative standpoint, they don't legislate that in West Virginia. You guys aren't taking Well, advice. and I'd no. like to no. sort of do the presentations. We're getting into really good ideas. I, we want to capture that. But I do want to get some basic information down in terms of who takes what. And so, uh, Rick, 
the city of Parkersburg takes, because we just went to the recycling center on yeah, the way I, I, to this meeting, because I live out at Mountwood Park, oh. and there's no recycling out in my area. Okay, well, I've got flyers that, that show, and everybody's more than welcome to have. i got some information on what we do and everything. But our Let base, you, you want the basics? Yeah, if you want. Okay, mixed paper, which is any kind of newspaper, uh, your flyers out in paper, anything like that. Office paper. Yeah, office paper, any, any materials like that. And then all cardboard. Yeah. All the corrugated cardboard, It's called we call it OCC, is what it's, mm -hmm. the technical market term is. Old corrugated containers. Right, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, then we do number one plastics, number two plastics, glass, as long as it's in bottle or jar form, Aluminum cans, steel cans, and scrap metal. Steel, steel aluminum, mm -hmm. and scrap metal. And any, any type of scrap metal. Okay. Now, you well, we, we will take tires, but we do not pick them up. If they bring them to us, and you show me uh, something that shows you live in the city of Parkersburg, we'll dispose of the tires for free. Do you think they have rims on Yes, it doesn't matter. What if you're a Wood County design company? Well, then you have to talk to this gentleman I'm, right here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, in Wood County, your haulers yeah. required right. to take eight tires every right. year at no additional charge. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So anybody can use the city's <coughs> recycling system. Absolutely. We, right. we get a, actually, we get a big amount from across the bridge because right? Belfry's Evidently, their system doesn't work too good over there. It's amazing how many Ohio tag cars are there every, and they're religious. I mean, yeah. they're there. I see them all the time. Same people. And then you fund the center then through okay. state grants and we get the grants, but don't kid yourself. The trash department pays for the center for the recycling. Center. Right, so our tax dollars. All, absolutely, pay all the labor costs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, our uh, tax dollars pay for that. Right, the, the grant money helps us with equipment, and that's been the biggest thing. So, Mike, that's your. Yeah, I mean, I, I could go through some of the stuff. Like, for instance, this year's roof grant, uh, we bought a new recycling truck. Well, I used one, but yeah. you know, uh, that was a big expense. Uh, even stuff like bailing wire, um, conveyor, new conveyor belt. Sure. Um, we did a lot of paving, so that was all paid for by the roof grant. Right. Um, buying more recycling bins because we could never have enough of those. Yeah. Um, you pay for that. Uh, yes. Just general well, no, tools, we pay tires for forklift, uh, 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 just paying to repair the compactor. The main road, so we should be in a lot of So the grants pay for stuff and the city pays for the people? Basically, the labor the labor cost and the utilities and stuff that the, the trash department pays for that out yeah. of sanitation fees. Yeah. The grant money, the, the biggest help there is equipment. And then John built us a pretty much like a Taj Mahal over in drop off area. I don't know if any of you have been there, but, but it's it's it. great. Yeah. It's great. It's, yeah, it we is. Get real proud of that. It's nice and clean and yeah. People from all over the state know about it. Yeah. I don't know how they found yeah. out. <laughs> you got your name on that. No, not yet. <laughs> when he retires, I'll guarantee you they'll get something on it. Let me ask you one more question. Just hang on, hang on, John. Hang on, John. Uh, what, what are the markets for you in terms of... They're horrible. <laughs> no, but I, I'm telling you, I went to the state conference that was put on by the Solid Waste Authority, the DEP puts it on, and... Uh, it was heartbreaking. These folks, uh, the lady there from Ritchie County and stuff, these smaller counties and said, I don't know how they survive. And when I heard, yeah. well, when yeah. I heard mm -hmm. the prices and, and what they're getting out of their materials, it's awful. Now, we do better with the city simply because of our volume. And we're set up, the company that buys our mixed paper, our OCC, the corrugated cardboard, and the number one plastics is one of the largest fiber groups 
in the world. I mean, they're huge. Who is that? Uh, <coughs> for years, it was Caristar, and it sold to an outfit called Gripe, okay. which is one of the, which is a huge, huge company. But we've got the the bailing capacity, the storage capacity, and the loading capacity to to ship 40,000 pound load, and that's what they require. If, it, if you don't put 40,000 on there, Together. yes, yeah. my guys ever make a mistake, they charge us about 250 bucks just for making that, if we're 100 pounds under that 40,000. So far, that's never happened to us, but uh, that's why I'm, I'm a little picky about stuff, but we're lucky. Folks out here in these rural counties that don't have the storage to put that much or the, you know, they're getting pennies on the dollar of what, what the city is. Well, is there anything, any other question for Rick? Yeah, Grife is, is out of uh, the North Carolina, Georgia area. Their main office is in Atlanta. Um, I've got all those details if anybody wants. Like I said, I brought a bunch of information and I can share that with you. Now, Ron buys all her number twos, all the milk jugs and the, the HD material. That's good. And they have for years. And I've had people, well, Grife would love to buy it. But I would rather sell it locally. Yes, yeah. Um, R and James Recycling right there on Garfield, they buy all our scrap metal. Our aluminum cans go to Ashley's Recycling. Yeah. And R and James got mad at me because I, but why not share it around, split sure. it around a little bit, yeah. you know? Absolutely. But we sell that stuff locally, which is great. Yeah. Which is great. So your number one only bottles. You don't want any. I mean, like, are you any number one? Any number one. Or any number, number one or any. It's like plastic bottles. Be even the black, well, the black number ones they have now. Yes. Right. Now I'll be honest. A lot of that black stuff, we don't catch. You'd have to come up and watch the system work. But you, of that black material, you know how many different numbers is on that black material? Well, I mean, and black when our number. conveyor's going by as fast as you can get it out. So even way. if it's a number one, you have to pull a black one. Well, we could put a mix them in there if we could catch them at the right time. But yeah. if you if you grab this, you don't, you don't know whether that says you know. Exactly. You don't know what's a one or a five. Right. When, right. when you do the right. amount that we do, right. you can't pick every piece up. Yeah. So, but the, so you know, water bottles is huge. I mean, it's just skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. And then a couple of years ago, you know, when they had the C8 problem up in Vienna, yes. and they had all that bottled water, we did a million and a half bottles in two months. Oh, wow. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. Question. Yes. Do, you, do your schools recycle? To a certain extent, yes. Okay. Yes, John can fill you in on that. He, he had a grain, I think. Yeah, we, well, we, and I think like we can move over to the county now, if that's okay. But then we're going to circle back around. There'll be plenty of time for discussion. So, so uh, pick yeah, up from one, here. Yeah, we we put in um, every middle school in Wood County. We put in uh, recycling bins in every single classroom in all six middle schools. The Wood County Salt and Waste Authority paid for that. Uh, waste management partnered with us and they agreed to put outdoor recycling containers in free. And the students themselves operate the program because there was a problem with the contract with the custodians. It wasn't in their contract that they had to have to recycling. And we thought it was great anyway because the students learn that way. And they have to take all the recycled product outside to the container. Well, what happened is Waste Management got back with the Wood County Schools and said, you all have reduced your trash so much now that we can reduce your trash bill by 20% because we pick up less often. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, the Board of Education that I had to go to meeting after meeting and sell them this idea, oh, they love it. You know, <laughs> it saved them 20% of the bill. So now they'd like the elementary schools to do it. And we just can't do it because of the custodial contract. You could run a ninth grade, eighth grade student or whatever they are in middle school, you run him outside and say, empty that recycling, but you can't do that to a first grader, you know. So we've got a little bit of a problem there, but we'd like to expand that. Why not the high schools? The high schools do it on a voluntary basis, 
Uh, Parkersburg South, we didn't go, to, if you go to the middle schools, they're really neat containers. And we spent, uh, it was like $36,000 just on the container. But they're all bright blue, bright yellow, they've got kids' handprints, they've got kids' artwork on it, you know. At Parkersburg South, we provided the bins that Rick basically has, but they don't care, and they're using them. Um, and I told them in the presentation before, we had a, a challenge with Parkersburg Catholic South and, and PH, PHS <clears throat> called Recycle Rumble, who could increase their recycling the most. Mm -hmm. And that challenge went well. Parkersburg Catholic won it. And if you go by and see the trailer, the recycling trailer that sits in the parking lot at Parkersburg Catholic, the prize from the Wood County Solid Waste Authority for whoever increased was a TV. And when we announced that Parkersburg Catholic won it, the Spanish teacher called me, and she said the students are just elated that they won, but they won't know rather than having a TV, could they have a recycling trailer? Wow. Because it would better enhance their program. Wow. And we were so impressed, I should say my board was. I was too, but <laughs> the TV cost, I think, $700 at the time, and the recycling trailer was 11000 yeah. <laughs> And our board was so impressed that the students would feel that way that they spent the 11000 wow. And that's where that trailer came from. So we're real pleased with some of the things that they do in schools. Yeah, yeah it's like they're owning, they're owning it. So that's right, exactly. So, so the, really you know, basically for Wood County, the requirements in terms of what you take are the same. Same. Right? Yeah. He operates the recycling center basically for Wood County. Yeah. It comes in from all over the county and he processes it. That beautiful recycling center, which I do think is the, the prettiest in the state, we just got that completed. That was purchased by us, the Wood County Solid Waste Authority. So if you go up, you'll see the sign, as Ron was talking about. Um, it says, provided by the Wood, Wood County, operated by the city of Parkersburg. So we've formed a real good partnership to make that thing work. But we spent, um, well, way too much money probably on that. You know, we've got concrete, lighting, uh, 17 bins over there, or 16? No, there's 13. 13 underneath, and then built the shelter over top. The reason we built the shelter, I had a lot of calls. Originally, we just had those 13 green bins, and people would go out, and they'd have to hold the lid with their elbow and shut. And I said, I get calls all the time. I said, well, I have to leave it on there because we can't get the product wet, especially paper and cardboard. So we decided if we build a shelter over top, we can take the lids off the things. And it's just made it a lot easier for it people. It is much easier. Yeah, yes. to throw in. Yes. But we're real pleased, so if you haven't seen it, go down and just take a look at it. <laughs> Where is that? It's at the recycling center. Oh, okay. It's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week community right. recycling no. that anybody can bring product from even right. metal. Right. Okay, um, I'm going to go to Marietta now, and uh, Michael, thanks, Mike, yeah. for being here. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. I know you've got a busy evening, so. Um, Kathy Ott is with the Fort. Fort, I'm sorry. I've gotten everybody's name, so I'm not, you know. Um, and you are, the, run the, Mary, or help run the Marietta Recycling Center, which is really volunteer Right. Manage, right? Yeah. So tell us about that. Okay. The Marietta Area Recycling Center, um, you could probably use this. That would be great. I'll sit down in front of me. I don't want to hold it. Okay. Um, the Marietta Area Recycling Center was founded in 1976. It's probably one of the oldest recycling centers in the state. And it, um, it was founded by my mother, Marilyn Ort, and Caroline Putnam. At the time, uh, it was uh, run on city property, and the city of Marietta was involved with it. And then in 1990, when curbside recycling became in effect, uh, they broke away from it, and the county commission came in, and they helped support the process. Um, and then in 2010, the, uh, the county had a problem with their budget, and they decided that with the Solid Waste District providing trailers throughout the county, that they wouldn't support the recycling center anymore. So in 2010, local volunteers who had been at the facility all this time period decided to continue to operate the recycling center. And to this day, it's totally volunteer run. 
Um, we have about 24 volunteers, but we also have leadership students through the Marietta College program, um, leadership program, and they come over as part of their volunteer hours and they help out at the recycling center. And they've been a big help to us over the last two years. Um, and we're located at um, Yolman Avenue uh, in uh, Marietta, which is right across from the Marietta High School Boathouse, if you're familiar with Marietta. Um, we operate under the 501c3 of Rural Action, which is out of Athens, Ohio. They do a lot of um, uh, programming through Southeast Ohio to um, support the communities. Um, and one of their programs is the Zero Waste Initiative, and we operate under that. And they're our fiscal officer. Um, so um, our volunteers come from RSVP, Retired Senior Volunteer Program, and then we just have people who are environmentally inclined that want to help out. We have kind of the motto there that an hour a week can make a difference. And that's kind of what we push is that if we just have volunteers come and work just one hour, we can get the job done. Um, and we manage to do it. Um, we process about 600 tons of materials a year um, through that facility. And we do it without a lot of the equipment that a lot of these other places do because we are volunteer run. So we don't have the bailers and all of the different conveyor systems and equipment. Um, forklifts, those are not things that volunteers do. So we do a lot of more hand packing, stacking, and um, contamination control by hand. Um, it's all done that way. Um, we pride ourselves on the fact that we have a very, very low contamination rate. Uh, the one thing that is kind of a drawback for us is because, just like they were talking about, volume, gets you in in better prices, we don't have that ability. Um, we do work locally with Mondo Polymers, it's great, they take our plastics. Uh, we send our cardboard to Athens Hawking Recycling Center, they bail it for us and they send it to market. We uh, send our paper to Bucyrus, it gets um, made into insulation. Our glass, it gets taken to British Glass in um, Pennsylvania. They make insulation out of some of it, Pink Panther insulation, and it goes back into beer bottles. Um, our aluminum goes to usually Guernsey Recycling uh, here, which is local. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Our steel and our green glass, and our, um, they go to uh, the Solid Waste District Transfer Station where they take care of that. Um, so, um, that's kind of well. What do you, what do you take? Okay. In, just in terms of um, we're so trying to come here. Our plastics, we take one, two, fours, and fives, and we take plastic bags. One, two, fours, and fives. And so plastic bag film. Yes. You mean plastic film? Plastic film in general. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we take clear, clear green and brown glass. And you sorted there yes yes that's one of the things that's really important at our place is we split stream everything is split and sorted so it's not like you put it into one cum and put it in one container and we and we sort it out we have separate totes for every different type of material um, and that helps volunteers be able to help handle the volumes that we do okay and then what else we take steel cans and scrap steel, aluminum cans. Uh -huh. We take corrugated cardboard, OCC, and we also take pasteboard, which is gonna be your cereal boxes and all of this, what we call your slick stuff. Is that <laughs> it mixed together with the corrugated? It is, yeah. yes, yes. Is that an issue for you guys in terms of pasteboard versus corrugated? If we mix that in, or we're not supposed to do that? It, it doesn't really matter. We'd rather, I mean, the pasteboard can get right in with the mixed paper. Oh, okay. You know, we make right. it like that. Uh, the trick is, I, I had the, the guy from Gripe 
called me about three years ago and he warned me about this, the market's going to attack. He said, I'm telling you, there's a contamination issue with the China, India deal and all that. He said, the, the cleaner you can get your product, or the safer yeah. you're going to be to move it. Yeah. Yeah. And because ours is extremely clean, uh, in fact, our paper ends up down in Austell, Georgia, goes into a drywall fact. Yeah. So do they consider pasteboard a contaminant? It's just that there's not... No, 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 it's just... Yeah, if, if you mix the corrugated in with the mixed paper, yeah. you know, they, they have a percentage that they allow... Or the pasteboard. What about just the pasteboard? What is that? The pasteboard, no, no, no. right? No, the pasteboard, we put it right with our regular mixed yeah. paper. Okay. Oh, we put it with our cardboard. Yeah, we do too. Yeah. Okay. okay, all right. And so, okay, corrugated, uh, is, is that basically it? And then mixed paper? Right, mixed paper. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Really different operation yeah. in terms of what, what you. So, how? $5 a time. You're paying $125 a month for a trailer to sit there and $516 to haul it to the market. You're losing money. But. And you're, you try to subsidize it other ways, but really it requires donations to help bridge that gap. Luckily, in prior years, we also did make some money, and we are very, very frugal <laughs> in our operations. So we try to we have we have some rainy day funds, and we it, it's it's good to have that. But definitely, the support of the community is what's kept the recycling center open. Does the DEP have a high enough fund grants like they did with the Pinlock Pandemic? No, not, not the same way. Uh, the, EP, the, the Solid Waste District can get money, um, but the Solid Waste District does not want to support a privately run recycling center. Oh, um, so, um, in West Virginia, the DEP will fund the private. Mm -hmm. they even like a salvage own. yard, yeah. things of yeah. new, buy yeah. And like you said, a private trash hauler, not just the city, right. to get recycling bins and all that through our DEP grants. Right. Mm -hmm. But you said, Kathy, that the Solid Waste Authority puts trailers out in the county. Right. Now, now that is something that Wood County does not do. Right, that's right. What yeah. you have to understand, though, is the Solid Waste District puts um, trailers out in the county for about 24 hours <laughs> once a month. In other words, they rotate them around. So they rotate them around. So if you miss the day, then that's it for another month, unless you take oh, it to Oh, you mean it's site. like a roving trailer? Yeah, yeah they're roving. So, we're a tw so that's why we've always maintained the recycling center, yeah. because we're available 24 hours a day, 365 days yeah. a year. Okay. Because we believe that the way, and just like Parkersburg does, the way for people to recycle is to encourage them to incorporate it into their everyday life. Yeah. You come into town, you're on your way to work, whatever it is, that's when you drop off. It's not that one day a month. Yeah, yeah. You know, because people are not going to, if they miss it, they don't want to have two months worth of stuff in their garage. Yeah, so, so they throw it away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Usually get, get subsidized by the county, mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Recycling Center did, but then course, as money got tighter, then they decided they weren't going to fund the recycling yeah, center. Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. That's right. They really sucked. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, uh, wow. Each story is, mm -hmm. is 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 somewhat different. And I now, have a quick question first. So you uh, pay to have some things bailed or compressed, but some things go loose. You, you have to you have to send them and right. work with work with whoever will. Right. Right. Like well, for instance, our cardboard gets packed in the trailer, but then it goes to Athens. They bail it for us, and then they're the ones marketing it. Okay. Our, pa our paper also goes in loose. Yeah. And yeah, there are certain places that we can get into that are, are willing to offload it. Do you way. have a reddish glass hopper on your lot? No. no. Yes, yes. Yeah. Was one well, they they you need a roll off. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Come and change yeah, yeah. When it's empty, when it's, right. when it's full. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have one too, it's $50 a month. For us to have it sited there. I don't know if they charge the people the same price or not. Well, we don't get paid for our glass, so we get paid. Oh, a little tiny bit. Yeah. 
Okay, so we, we don't. So we just okay. have we have a brown and a clear glass roll up that we okay um, that we have. And, and glass is one of those things right now that luckily we're able to recycle it. There are some areas that are not recycling glass at all right now. My sister lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they're not recycling glass because of cost. Because of price. Yeah, the price is just, it's not going up. So. Um, well, let us move to a, from a big county like Wood to a small county like Ritchie, which is right next door. And uh, Jane Hearn has been on the uh, Ritchie County Solid Waste Authority for decades. 30, 30 years. They don't have a term limit for Ritchie. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, like, we like fresh blood, but um, for those of us who are obsessed, it's a good thing to, to see. The continuity you know, to keep, of it. Right. On. So uh, anyway, I'm sure people would have different opinions on whether there should be a term limit uh, we operate, uh, we're a county facility in Ritchie County, about between Parkersburg and Clarksburg, if you don't know where it is. And um, we operate under the uh, oversight of the Ritchie County Solid Waste Authority, which is basically a state mandated, every county maybe doesn't have a functioning solid waste authority, but it's mandated by West Virginia Code to have five members. Um, we're functioning with four board members right now. Uh, our center is located in Ellenboro, just barely south of Route 50. If you're headed from Ellenboro to Harrisville, it's a pretty handy uh, location for semi-rigs <coughs> to come and market. And uh, we, we take a certain amount of things to Parkersburg ourselves. We have a box truck uh, that's pretty good, but it costs money to keeping good repair, and a, uh, a pickup truck, uh, five trailers that we've bought also with DEP REAP grants, and we kind of alternate between uh, DEP REAP grants, it's like restoring environmental action program or something like that, it's, it's like, it's four words, it, it's a statewide cleanup program. Um, we basically alternate between uh, having one grant going each year, it'll either be a REAP grant, or West Virginia Solid Waste Management Board grant. That does not fully fund us, but that's one of our five sources of money. Uh, if we have a year when something goes wrong, we couldn't get our auditing done in time or whatever, and we miss a grant cycle, it's really bad news. That means a whole year of struggling uh, for repairs and things that, that the grant helps with, equipment, similar things to what Mike was talking about. Anyway, our center uh, used to be at one point a big tire center, so we have several bays, and um, basically it was in poor shape, and so it's been 30 years of you know grant money and equipment and volunteer labor, and it's in it's in pretty good shape now. the The center also went through many years of being horrible, <laughs> mountains of trash that we couldn't keep ahead of, and it's it's just the opposite now. I have to say, knock on wood, we have a crew that is just nonstop, self-motivated and nonstop. Uh, we could use more space. We have a Quonset hut for storage, which we had to buy one year on a grant because it wasn't a very large grant, and round buildings aren't, you know, <laughs> aren't the best. <laughs> but anyway, um, I can name our different funding sources. Do you want me to just name what we take at this point? Yeah, or, okay. that'd be good. Okay, um, scrap steel, including white goods, that's a non-labor deal because we have a hopper from Matrix Metals, Metals, which is just a couple miles away, and they do not charge us a freight charge. We were paying um, RJs to do that. And so um, they just, whenever we call them, whenever it's full, they trade it off. Steel prices are very, very low. It's a maybe an eight by 24 by four and a half foot hopper uh, roll off. And uh, when it's mounted over, we might get $80, $89 for it. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate people who are still selling their scrap steel to someone because you're, you're just getting pennies. But we don't have to touch, well, we use our forklift to help load it sometimes, but basically it, it uses almost none of our labor. We take, uh, we also have a Bradish roll-off for clear 
green and brown, and he said we could put blue in with the clear. You don't get a whole lot of cobalt blue bottles, but it's nice to know where to put them if you have them. Um, we take OCC uh, cardboard, and right now we're selling it to Ace Paper in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. And as it was already touched in, touched on a couple of years ago, more or less it was $165 a ton. Uh, earlier this year, very early in the year, or in 2019, it was uh, 70, then 50, then it dropped to 20. And we stole, which people all across the nation were doing this, we held it for three months, which was really hard for us to do. And uh, now it's up to 25, so we're selling it again. <laughs> But, you know, if you, for some, for some products, you know, you're not, you're, if you add your labor and your utilities and everything else, you're losing money. But we are picking it up uh, two days a week all over the county from commercial and schools. And uh, when you get the check, it's, it's a piece of the puzzle that, that helps to fund us our materials. Anyway, number one, plastic um, water and beverage bottles twos, fours, and fives, which we're selling uh, to Mondo. And um, he's been very, Ron's been very helpful for us because um, he sends a truck out uh, when we have less than a full truckload. It takes us a long, long time to get, to, to get a full truckload of that. We're small, we just have, we have 10,000 people in our county, a lot more acreage than Wood County does, so of course we're scattered. Um, He's also buying our film, and we get a lot of film. Who is he? Uh, Ron, uh, Mondo Ron Paul. Yeah. Okay. And um, so it goes in the same load, but we don't bail it. We compress it in Gaylord boxes and kind of shrink wrap it. Are you talking about like the hay fields? No. Um, um, I think we... It's, I like, think it's like, you know, shrink wrap comes off of yeah, okay. carton and stuff like Trash that. Trash bags, grocery shrink bags. Wrap. Yeah, shrink, yeah, shrink wrap. wrap. It but comes... You, you, like a pallet of stuff like that's wrapped, you know, mm -hmm. it ships out. You know, plastic that, that's bags, what smooth about. plastic yeah. bags. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only types of plastic bags, people have a hard time with this. Uh, we can't, he said the shred, the plastic bags, have you ever noticed pet food bags, they look like they're woven, yeah. kind of right. strandy. Those tangle up in the equipment, right? right. So we, we are constantly explaining that to people because somebody see, there's a number five on there, like, well, if you ran this machinery, you wouldn't want it. Anyway, um, steel food cans, we're taking those now to Ashley's bale. Uh, aluminum soft drink and beer cans, we're bailing them, them and also selling them to Ashley's. Um, we have an aluminum mix which they buy, which we bail three things together. It's your aluminum cat cans, they're the ones with white inside. And um, foil, real aluminum foil, it can be lightly used. And also uh, the foil, what do you call them, baking pans, the aluminum disposable baking pans. Those three go together and get bailed together. Uh, oh, does Wood County not take that stuff? Because I just put some in the recycling today. What was that? Like a, like a, a aluminum, uh, like a baking pan. Sure. Or tin yeah. Foil. Yeah. Any metal items. Any yeah, metal. okay, okay. Wait. Newspaper. Uh, we separate our paper. We may talk to the company and do what more of this mixed paper I'm hearing about more. But uh, we have newspaper, which is separate from slicks, magazines, catalogs, glossy mailers, anything glossy. Books, hardback and paperbacks go together. Office paper is separate. Um, and then we accept uh, any televisions, computers, and computer accessories, mostly handling those once a year through a grant, uh, which West Virginia has, it's called the CED grant, Covered Electronic Devices, and we, we, and I think the state of West Virginia too, I'm not sure, will not let those go out except to a, a E-certified company. They're called R2 or E-Steward companies. They build up until once a year. Um, TVs, we ask a suggested donation for $5 a piece because when the electronics go out, you get a minus a pound for TVs and you get a few pennies for computers. We also operate a, a small buyback operation. So on our two public days, which are Thursdays and Saturdays, um, we'll buy uh, aluminum cans, let me think, batteries, motors, radiators, brass, copper, all 
all types of items that Ashley's purchases. So we have to keep our price a little below there, then we haul those in ourselves. I don't know whether you so want you to know. Take that car battery, vehicle yeah. batteries. I can real quick give you the funding sources without explaining them if you want, and then if people have questions, they can ask. Yeah, I would just say really fast okay. in terms of, I think you've kind of described most of it, Jane. Um, solid waste authorities get a monthly assessment fee uh, from the state, okay. and what happens is the number of tons that Ritchie Countyans tip every month at Northwestern Landfill, there's a surcharge, and then that surcharge um, goes down to Charleston. It gets, I think it's shared with solid waste uh, management, DEP, and one other. And then that money, portion of that money comes back to us. It amounts to, uh, right now to about 2,000 a month. When we first began, we thought that was big money, and now it helps with the bills. Uh, marketing, uh, which is up and down and all over the place, but we've managed to basically pay our labor, our utilities, and our insurance and everything else and come out a little under or a little over zero at the end of every month. The county commission is supporting us. Uh, it was about $10,000 a year. I think it's gone up a little if we have urgent needs. They look at their budget and help us when they can. Small amounts of individual donations and the whole marketing picture and grants. It's like a five piece funding puzzle. Okay, lots of information. Um, different, people take different stuff. Um, and um, I guess at, at this point, uh, on, my, on my own agenda, I had a, a few minutes for like recycling stories. As, as someone who cares about uh, waste. Um, I was I sort my trash and I've got a couple bags of number fives. Well, I need to take that to Marietta or I give it to Jane after church. You know, I've got bags of film and so I've got quite a few bags of film that I would love to get rid of. I hadn't been thinking I could take it to Marietta so much but I give a lot of trash to Jane because I see her in church, it's you know. It's, hello, it's, hello, it's not trash. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're right. It, it's a resource. It qualifies as recyclable. It, 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 it's a recyclable. And so, you know, I live in a rural area of Wood County and the only trash hauler we have is waste management. And they do not, re they will not recycle for residential customers. And that pisses me off. Don't edit that out. Yeah, uh, it's too late. You're live. It's all good. But they, they go by my house and they've got this sign on the side of their trucks about how many trees they save with their recycling program. And it just irritates me every time I see it. So they are a big recycler. They just don't do it in certain they, It's too much trouble for them to yeah. do, you know. So, um, well, can I pick up on that? Please do. I'm, I'm just, yeah. that's my little recycling story. Right. Is, we brought that up you know. in our last meeting here in November that we had a problem. We're doing a series of television commercials you may have seen trying to encourage people to recycle. And fortunately, it's having an impact. I wouldn't call it a major impact. But I'm getting probably, I'm by brick every week with a list of names to deliver new bids or new people that saw the commercial more on. But I'm getting more calls from people saying, hey, I saw your TV commercial. We'd love to join in. How do we do that? We've got waste management. Mm -hmm. And I say they refuse to recycle. So at the last meeting, I told you I was going to have a meeting with them, which I did. Carrie Riddle is the district manager and uh, Jeff some Brown out of Fairmont. And they finally, after all these meetings, they meet with me, then they meet with their big shots, and they meet with little John, and <laughs> they came back and concluded that the only way they will agree to recycle in Wood County is if we mandate the county commission, which he said other counties in West Virginia have done, uh, if the county commission would make it a law, making it mandatory to recycle. Well, Commissioner Dunn can tell you that's probably not gonna happen. 
unfortunately. Lose, and he said, I'd lose two to one. Yeah, it would. That's exactly right. If Wayne was on the commission, it would be two to one. It'd probably be three to nothing, I think. Yeah, three to nothing. Now. And he, he explained, it, it costs a lot of money, and I understand that, for a business to go in and invest in trucks and equipment and processing and all this stuff. And then two customers sign up. You know. So he said, we decided if, if the county commission would make it mandatory, then we would agree to invest millions of dollars in this recycling program. So that's kind of unfortunately where we're at in the deadline there. Well, it says on their